and welcome to the SportsCast, April 25th, 2018. It's a busy week in sports. We have the NBA playoffs going on, and we have the NFL draft going on tomorrow, tomorrow night. But we have to get to the NFL draft as soon as possible. And and with that, we have Ryan Krista on the line. Welcome to the SportsCast. Thank you, Santiago. Glad to be back. Yeah, uh, you saved this moment for the NFL draft. What are your thoughts, um, uh, like, like where things are going? Well, I, you know, when we talk about this draft, we're always going to remember, you know, this is one of those highly uh, sought after quarterback drafts. You know, we got a lot of names that we've been hearing since you know college football has been over, and it just. It's going to be interesting to see where these players who have been dissected, every throw, every play in college, every workout, you know, we've analyzed all the numbers, you know, now it's up to you teams to decide which player fits their team best and which player um, they're going to go with, you know. So, you know, that's going to be what the storyline Thursday, you know, how many quarterbacks are going to be drafted in the first round and where they're going to go. Yeah, this uh, this draft is very quarterback centric. Uh, they're predicting five, maybe the six quarterbacks to go in the first round. Let's go from. I'm gonna one... go with six, Santiago. Yeah, that's my bold prediction. Six quarterbacks. Uh, reason why I say six because New England could draft a quarterback in the first round. Whether he goes in the first round or he might go early in the second round. Okay, let's go team by team and see. Uh, which team will take who, or or what position you think they're uh, they're strongly leaning towards? Let's go for the first pick, the Cleveland Browns. Who do you think they'll get? I you know this is going to be their quarterback pick. You know, I did, I thought it was coming down to two guys between Sam Darnold and Josh Allen, but you know the last day or so, and I'm not quite sure. You know, sometimes the NFL teams will put out false information to try to fix up teams, but, you know, you're hearing a lot of Baker Mayfield talks there. But, you know, in the end, I do think they're going to go, you know, with one of the big strong arm quarterbacks, and that's gonna, I'm going to go with Sam Darnold. Yeah, Sam Darnold has been talked about for the first pick. Uh, yesterday, they've been talking about, I mean, they're probably Baker Mayfield. But I think Darnold is, um, I mean, let's, let's uh, uh, walk back a little bit. Now, like, these quarterbacks – most people are predicting they're not going to be like championship quarterbacks. I mean, they could be, but they're not like star studded. No, you know, they, they're, they're each of them, you know, even though we're talking about, you know, five quarterbacks, six quarterbacks, I mean, when they're first round, they're all have a lot of imperfections and there's a lot of unknown to them, you know, and maybe one of these unknown quarterbacks that will be drafted beyond. You know, these five or six in the first round up being better than any of these because you just don't know. You know, with Sam Darnold, you know, there's, he's got all the measurables, but it's just inconsistency. You know, with this year, he's supposed to be a high than trophy, potential this year that he was supposed to. But then you got Josh Allen, you know, this guy who basically had a bag to get a Division One offer. You know, had nothing out of high school, went to junior college, you know, sent out, they say, up to 10,000 letters to coaches and coordinators across the country, and only two people responded, and one of them being Wyoming. You know, he played in a, you know, he didn't have the, obviously the greatest talent around him in Wyoming, but, you know, he's definitely got all the measurables. Big kid, strong arm, played in cold weather, so he's, you know, he's used to throwing the ball, you know, in that perfect weather, but there's just a lot of, you know, unknown because he didn't play against great competition every week. And he didn't play with the greatest talent around him, you know, so his completion percentage was picking the top ten you would like to, but you know, he came from the same system produced Carson Wentz. Craig Ball, the coach of Wyoming, was also a coach in North Dakota State for most of the time that Carson Wentz was there. So there's this possibility, you know, is this guy a quarterback whisper? Is he able to since they run a pro style offense? There won't be much difference in what he sees in college and he'll see in the NFL in regards to the playbook. And then you got Josh Rosen, you know, a guy who has 
the most talent of any of these quarterbacks, but he just comes, you know, he's got this personality. He doesn't really, you know, he's not a great leader. You know, he he kind of rubs people the right wrong way. You know, he he's kind of an intellectual guy, which kind of goes beyond what, um, which is kind of say silly. The guy's too smart for football, but you know, he's not your prototypical. Uh, Football rah rah kind of guy, uh, kind of got that California too cool attitude. But in the same regard, he's got the most talent in this team. You know, he's going to make some team very, very happy. Because once he gets in the NFL, he's, he's going to have to change his demeanor uh, to be more of a team focused guy. You know, if you can get him on the on the right track, this is a guy I think can be a starring NFL for many years to come. And That's... then you got. Um, Lamar Jackson, you know, the flashy the flashy guy, you know, from Louisville, kind of the guy who makes all the highlight plays, you know. What with Lamar Jackson, you know, is he more of a runner than he is a quarterback? You know, his accuracy has been um, kind of his uh, weak, weakness throughout this draft and, you know, throughout the last year. But what he can do on the field, you know, and what he can do with his legs, he can extend plays, and he's got a good enough arm. If he can improve that accuracy enough, he's going to be more of the later, the first, later first round. But he is going to make uh, some team very happy if they're able to use him in the right way. The only negative is he's going to have to limit his running because proven in the NFL, you can't run without getting hurt. And then the last major quarterback we got is. Baker Mayfield, you know, his weakness, he's only six feet tall. But again, he's a playmaker, you know. He, guy, he's got a play with a chip on his shoulder. He never got a scholarship from his first stop at Texas Tech, and then he had to walk on to Oklahoma because he wasn't happy um, being a backup at Texas Tech. He came to Oklahoma, won the starting job, and put three years of a Heisman Trophy finals, you know, winning the last year, but you know, how many players go to college for, you know, for three straight years while also being a highest in trophy finalist, putting up insane numbers? You know, was it because of his own quarterback-friendly system? We'll have to find out. But uh, he's got some off-the-field issues. He had a rest in the offseason before his senior season. He had, you know, an incident at the University of Kansas where he, you know, grabbed himself. And, um, but... I definitely think the positive with him outweigh the negative is he, you know, he gets compared to, you know, Johnny Manziel, but I think he's a little bit more solid of a quarterback, better arm, uh, better talent. So I, you know, he's definitely worth the rest for in my regard. Let's go back to the, uh, to the picks. Um, for number two, the Giants, uh, we got a 37 year old. This is where the draft starts getting interesting, Santiago. <laughs> You know, we talked about Eli Man. He's coming up in age. We know he's going to be the starting quarterback this year. Do the Giants feel comfortable with their backup quarterback, Davis Webb, for the future, or are they going in another direction um, by drafting quarterback this year? Uh, or are they going to look to uh, go with Saquon Barkley, or are they going to go with Bradley Chubb? This is where I think the draft... You know, really starts getting interesting because that really determines what the next couple of picks are going to. You know, in my heart of hearts, I think the second pick, the Giants pick Saquon Barkley out of Penn State running back. Yeah, it seems like the Giants ha are not leaning towards a quarterback. That's what rumors are saying. That's what predictions are saying. It's unfortunate because I would choose a quarterback, uh, you know, like when you have a 37 year old, but I think you were saying they have a backup quarterback that is, uh, that might be the future, but I'm not very familiar with the Giants bench and their organization. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the biggest weakness the last couple of years has been a lack of running game, and you've got a highest rated running back we've had in a very long time, I'd say Quan Barkley, so that's, I think that's where they're going to end up taking. Yeah, uh, the Giants have lacked the running back for the past couple of years, so uh, this might be their moment. And we haven't seen much running backs. No, 
we have, uh, I like, like, uh, but it's a rarity to see a running back in the top five or in the top ten for the draft. But uh, let's move on to the the third pick, uh, the Jets. We 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 could we we could both agree it'll be a quarterback, but who? Yes, I'm gonna go. This is where you're gonna find Josh Rosen out of the UCLA deep pick. And, you know, can play. I, you know, he's never really played in a lot of cool weather, but he's got that big, strong arm, and I think he's gonna be able to make all the throws. Um, you know, he's gonna be able to sit a couple of years, at least one year, under behind Josh McDowell, um, the starter this year. So he's so. You know, kind of gradually take him through, but I think this is a guy you can ride your franchise through for many years. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much a given for the Jets. That's why they uh, they traded up their uh, their spot to third, and hopefully, um, hopefully, it would be good for the future of the Jets. They need a quarterback that haven't had one since Mark Sanchez, which is not saying much, but hopefully, this is it, and uh, we'll see. We'll you know we, we can see some promised future for this organization. For the fourth, Cleveland Browns, um, you said uh, Darnold will go first. So who will be their second pick in the fourth pick? <laughs> this is where you're going to find Bradley Chubb, outside lineman from North Carolina State. This is a dream scenario for their defense coordinator. You're going to be able to pick take Miles Garrett and then one pick last year and Brad, put him opposite um, Bradley Chubb, this year's best pass rusher and about the overall defensive lineman. You know, you're going to be able to... Uh, Wreck havoc on quarterback of the AFC North for sure for many years. Bradley Chubb, a very, uh, very talked about name uh, these past couple of weeks, and um, he's going high. You know, he's going high. He's one of the favorites, and the Browns are, you know, with these two picks they have already in the first round. I mean, they're they're looking good. They're looking bright. Do you think they're playoff contenders? Not this year. No, you know, we're we're talking about them picking. You know, we we I told them they're gonna pick Dan Darnold, but that's not gonna be their quarterback this year. They brought in Tyrod Taylor. They made a trade with the Bills. So that's gonna be their quarterback this year. You know, they did make a big splash by acquiring uh, uh, Jarvis Landry. So you, you know, you got um, Josh Gordon on one side, Jarvis Landry, but. And, you know, they're still, they're still a big town. Yeah, this team went 0 16 last year. I don't think you're going to bring in enough players in one year to, uh, change the franchise that much. But I do think they'll win five, six games this year for sure. That's better than the years prior. The fifth pick, the Denver Broncos. Your team. Who are they going to finally team, pick? Know, I do think this is going to be a quarterback and they, my heart of hearts, I think they're going to trade out of this pick. But if they don't trade out of this pick, it's going to be a quarterback, and I think they're going to take uh, the wild card, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. He is the wild card. Um, you're right. Uh, they could, like, are they dealing with the Bills for that uh, for that fifth spot? You know, the, the Bills definitely are in need of a franchise quarterback. So you're going to look for them to probably make a trade into the top 10 once they, you know, they identify where they can be able to pick their guy. It's just a matter, you know, they got some assets and more drastics later on that they'll be able to get to where they need to. But, you know, with no trades right now, I do think the Broncos will pick and um, Baker Mayfield. You don't think Josh Allen is a strong choice? A local guy playing from Wyoming, I do think he's got a lot of similarities to John Elway in the, you know, the way he throws the ball and his body type. But the Broncos got a lot of looks in the Baker Mayfield. They coached him in the Senior Bowl. Spent a lot of time there in the last couple weeks visiting. You know, the next, the next pick we got the Colts, and I think they're going to go offensive line. And I think they're going to, this is where you're going to, to Quentin Nelson from Notre Dame, though, so you you do have your franchise quarterback coming back this year, and and you look, you know, and you got to protect him. You know, he's injured, you know, frequently injured, and you need him back there in the center if the team wants to go anywhere. Uh, great blitzer, uh, was injured most of his sophomore year, had a great freshman year, and had a good year last year, and a 
uh, a below average Florida State team. But when he's on the field, he's a playmaker for sure. Yeah. Make a Fitzpatrick to the Niners is a strong prediction. Um, and finally, where do you think the Miami uh, like where the Miami Dolphins will get? Um, I, I mean, I know they're um, at eleventh, but what's left over, and what can they uh, possibly I, you choose? Know, this, this may be where you know, this may be where Josh Allen ends up, Santiago. You know, if Josh Allen does put the Broncos number five, which would totally not surprise me. This could be where Baker Mayfield ends up. You know, they may trade up to get him. Uh, you know, the the Dolphins and Bills, you know, their their teams and the Cardinals, they're teams that are definitely looking to draft a quarterback. You know, are they gonna be willing to make trades to get the quarterback that they why? This is it's gonna be a very exciting, you know, four or five hours tomorrow night for sure, Santiago. Sounds exciting, um, and it's funny. A lot of the AFC East teams need quarterbacks. <laughs> Santiago, there's a, you know, who are they chasing? They're chasing the Patriots, right? And you know, for fifteen plus years, the Patriots have started the same quarterback pretty much every game, and you know, the consistency between the same coach, same quarterback. This is what every team wants to desire. And this is what every team hopes for tomorrow night, that their hopes will come true, that they have the management, they have the coach, and they have the quarterback. If you got that, you will be successful. You know, the, the Eagles are living examples of that last year. Great organization, great GM, Holly Richmond, great coach, Doug Peterson. You know, Carson Wentz is a great quarterback, and they got, you know, solid leadership, you know, and they will bring in another solid quarterback in Nick Foles. That's the difference in the NFL. And that's the difference. Let's go for predictions for the NBA games tonight. Who do you have between the Wizards and Raptors? The series is tied 2-2, and they're playing in Toronto. Back in Toronto, I know this is running in the, the Wizards. Came out strong, got that, you know, came back in that uh, game four at home. Uh, John Wall was awesome towards the end of the game, was able to get that victory for the Wizards. But back in Toronto, I'm going to go back with uh, home team tonight, and the Raptors go up three to two at Jurassic Park. I choose the Raptors as well. The next uh, game tonight at 7 p.m. on TNT: the Pacers and Cavaliers two two. The series is pretty close, probably, probably the closest series in the whole on the whole first round. It, these are fun games to watch, aren't they, Santiago? Other than Game One, every game is just a back and forth. You know. So highly contested, physical, well played. You know, are these teams can championship contenders right now? Nope. <laughs> but this is a fun first round series. You know, you got Victor Oladipo trying to lead this upstate upstart Pacers team against you know the big strong LeBron James, and this series is showing how great LeBron James still is, even at you know what thirty three, thirty four years old. But tonight. Cavaliers come home, and I think they got the victory. They got three to two in a very nail biting game. Yeah, every every game has been really tight. Uh, Cleveland, win, you know, wins by uh, by uh, you know by an inch. And uh, you're right. I mean, LeBron's hard to beat. I mean, if if if, they, if Cleveland did not have LeBron, I mean, Cleveland would have been done in four. But it's definitely going to be a tight series. It's going <laughs> Cleveland to would be in the lottery, Santiago. They would be in the draft <laughs> lottery in a couple weeks if they didn't have LeBron James. One player can make a big difference, and uh, this might go down to seven games. I, You know, it's got, the, got it written all over it, Santiago. I think home team wins the next three games, and Cavaliers win the seven. That's just what I'm saying, and seven means squat, though. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, will the Rockets – Finish off the uh, the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. Oh, I think so, Santiago. They they embarrassed them in the second half up in Minneapolis uh, the other night, and finally, I think you know it's been a couple weeks since we've seen the Rockets really play that team basketball that we've seen all throughout the year, where they pass the ball, move it, shoot the ball well. When that happens, you know, it ha- you know they're not going to score fifty every quarter, but they're going to be pretty. Finally, do you think the Sixers are the Warriors of the East? Not yet, but all things stay the same. I think 
they're looking like that, Ben Simmons and, you know, if they can find a way to keep uh, J.J. Raddick along, you know, this, this, they're a fun team to watch, and when they put it all together, I think that he played some great basketball the last couple of weeks. They just, they didn't have the talent level of the uh, Sixers to compete with them for uh, 40 minutes every night, but I do think, you know, two teams that are headed on the upward trajectory, the Heat and 76ers. And will and can the Sixers make it to the finals? <laughs> I didn't think so when the playoffs started. I think you asked me. I think you wanted me to believe that, and I didn't. But yeah, I'm starting to believe it now, Santiago. More than I did two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I really think. I don't know about you, but I really think the Pacers could go deep if they beat Cleveland. They could go deep. You know the the Wizards are kind of exposing a little bit of the Raptors here. Uh, the Raptors kind of walked through the Eastern Conference most of this year, but in the playoffs, uh, you know, they haven't, you know, the Wizards have put up a really good fight, kind of, ex- you know, exposed this team a little bit, you know, with that and with the 76ers playing so well, yeah, I don't think there is a, you know, there's no shoe that's going to come out of the East. And that thing, I think the Eastern Conference is definitely waiting for a second place in the NBA Finals, that's for sure, I think. <laughs> And there you have it. NFL draft tomorrow night, playoffs games all week. Um, one last note on, on, on the NFL draft. So you expect, um, you expect like the first five picks to really set the tone of the week. I think the tone of the draft, you know, we know that the Browns number one are drafting quarterback, but the Giants are going to really set the tone especially the next couple of picks with whether they take a quarterback or they're going to take Saquon Barkley or Bradley Chelsea. And that's kind of, you know, and then the other storyline is the trade, you know, as the Bills, or the Dolphins, or the Cardinals, who is moving up to take these quarterbacks? You know, going into tomorrow night, each team has designated players they got to get, you know, three or four players, you know, that on the board that you and a lot of these teams, you start with a quarterback. If you look at the best available players, most of these quarterbacks are not going to be in the top 20. But you have to start with a quarterback, so you're going to overtrade to get to where you need to because without a great quarterback, you're going nowhere in this league for sure. And there you have it. Ryan Krista, welcome to the sport. <laughs> Thank you for coming on to the sportscast. It's always great to be here in Santiago. Uh, can't wait to come back again. I love you, Mindy and Cleet. And oh, and one more thing: How can people reach you? Oh, sure. Uh, look me up on Facebook, Ryan Chris. Or look me up on Twitter at the Mad Dog Report. Love to see, love to hang out and chat with you. Mad Dog Report, Ryan Chris. Thanks for coming to the Sportscast. We'll talk after the draft. All right, sounds good, Santiago.